Hey, what's up, everybody? So, one of my guilty pleasures as a book lover is to read novelizations for movies I've seen. With how many science books I read, sometimes my brain needs a break, and I just need something I can burn through without having to do too much thinking. I was actually thinking about maybe doing a series of book versus movie videos. We'll see. I don't read these novelizations too often, but I do enjoy them. Okay, let's get to the review. So... The novelization for the 1983 tragic crime drama Scarface, written by Paul Monette. I'm going to assume that anyone watching this has probably seen the movie, so I'm not going to worry about spoiling the plot for you. I will be discussing the story, so if you've not seen the movie, what are you doing? Go watch it, it's really good. With movie novelizations, the book is usually considered better than the movie by most people. With this one... It's hard to say, they capture the atmosphere in different ways. With the narration of the book, you get thoughtful lines like this one, describing Tony as his drug use it was spiraling out of control. The razor's edge of the coke was fighting a, the blur of the liquor, and it was all a losing battle. <laughs> I thought stuff like that was kind of cool, even if it is a bit cheesy. The book has a lot of stuff that wasn't in the movie. The first 50 pages are all stuff that takes place before the beginning of the movie. You get to see how Tony got his scar, his first kill, and the development of his obsession with money and his early work as a criminal. You also get a short history on Elvira and her backstory and how she met Frank. Oh, and in the book, Frank doesn't own a car dealership as his front. It's a bakery instead. Then there's just a bunch of extra scenes like... Tony and his gang robbing a bank and a store to finance their first big deal. Then there's this very strange scene involving a circus performance with Tony dressed as a ringmaster. Yeah, that one really threw me off. Another big difference, when the boats take the refugees to America, there's a violent storm and Tony's boat is destroyed and he ends up diving into the ocean and saving a child's life. They do a little more to make Tony a more sympathetic character than he was in the movie, so his downfall is more impactful. Something that I liked was there were a lot of references to the movie Treasure of Sierra Madre starring Humphrey Bogart, and that's one of my favorite movies, so I thought that was really cool. This book also had a lot of graphic sex in it. I don't have a problem with that, but at the same time, I don't want to read about it. At times, it just felt like a gratuity that interrupted the pacing of the story, so I didn't need all that. But I do think the author did a pretty good job instilling life into the characters, and I enjoyed the book from beginning to end, though by the end of it, I was ready to be done. When you're reading this book, you get a very clear picture of how it's structured around Tony's downfall. You can imagine like a line on a graph that's gradually rising, and then drops sharply as the last third of the book is just all about Tony's life falling apart as he loses everything he loved and everything he worked for. The book focuses more on how Tony completely loses his mind. By the end, he's undergone a complete break with reality, and it's pretty sad. Well, that's enough for this one. Thanks for watching the video, and if you like the movie Scarface and you like to read a bunch of stuff that wasn't in the movie, Go get the novelization Scarface by Paul Monette.